Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers. This morning I'm looking at a book, uh, which is a, um, a book that's been around for a while now. It's still got Stephen Cretney's name on. It's Cretney and Lush, and Cretney and Lush on lasting and enduring powers of attorney, now in the seventh edition. It's been edited by uh, Denzel Lush. This is the uh, book, there's the front of it, and then there's the back of it. It's a heavy book, it's nearly um, 750 pages. Back of it you've got a detailed index. It's from Jordan's and it's very much uh, part of their stable of, of uh, work. What you've got here are things like um, appendices at the back. You've got a, a little index right at the front which is helpful for the appendices. Um, you've got also things like forms which are extremely useful I think again uh, for people who are involved in this particular area and it is a growing area. Got another uh, good example there of the sort of form that's used. And it's useful to have this because it's a real minefield trying to work your way around some of the information. What you do have, of course, are paragraph numbering um, numbers at the, the side so you can find things reasonably easily. And uh, there are the occasional um, notes at the bottom, footnotes at the bottom. There's not too much of that, which is quite helpful. Um, there isn't an index on the chapters at the beginning, but you've got, you've got a standard introduction and you should be able to find things pretty easily. Then at the front you've got the standard um, statutes, of course, statutory instruments, a few cases, and you've also got um, quite a detailed um, content section with the various chapters. There are a lot of chapters and there are a lot of annexes, uh, appendices at the back. And then there is a commentary on the uh, preface, in fact, rather, on the, um, the most recent edition dated October 2013 from Denzel Lush, which is explaining some of the problems that have recently been happening in this area of law. Now I'm sure that many of you in practice may well be coming across this sort of problem area now in, in much greater detail as you get more clients who are involved in this sort of thing, um, which is of course the, uh, the lasting and enduring powers of attorney. And so it is important to know what is happening because it's expanding as an area. We've given it a title on the web and in the journals, Full Guidance for Practitioners on Enduring and Lasting Powers of Attorney. And this is what we say. The increasing problems of dementia and an ageing population have given rise to a maelstrom of issues surrounding lasting and enduring powers of attorney. These issues are, more often than not, complicated and a sad reflection of the uncomfortable necessities involved in caring for the interests of incapacitated human beings. Of course, many of them could well be your family. Um, I refer here generally to the incapacity caused by the mental deterioration or the aging process or both and it's therefore timely that this long established and definitive work on a complex subject is now in a seventh edition from Jordan's and Denzel Lush who's senior judge of the Court of Protection has uh, put some uh, very large amounts of work into this new edition to get it to up to um, scratch because obviously the it is moving as a subject quite quickly at the moment and in the preface which I do suggest you read he recalls that since the office of the public Guard, guardian that's the OBG was created on the 1st of October 2007 the demand for lasting powers of attorney exceeded even the wildest expectations and Lush goes on to refer to the uptake as so colossal that it caused major administrative problems for the OPG. In particular, its IT capability, staffing and accommodation, all of which in turn impacted on the service delivery. And this is not I and mean, this is a particularly good example of, of where in fact the court structure, the civil court structure, forget the criminal side completely, the civil court structure needs a, an urgent uh, overhaul and Lord Thomas, Lord Chief Justice certainly and others are well aware of the need for us to do something about this quickly because at the moment we could well be swamped again if we're not careful and it's <coughs> an issue which has to be looked at. However, these initial problems that I've referred to, which are mentioned in the preface, 
have for the most part been addressed for the time being anyway and the current expectation is the OPG will become increasingly proactive and we would assume efficient in its operations and I'm not making any other comment other than that we do rely as professionals on the professional expertise of the civil service to make sure things run properly and clearly they've also, there's another point, is they've also got to have the tools to go with the job they've actually got to get on with so I think one has to be very well aware of, of what the difficulties are and the need to reassess IT very much in the modern era. So the book, which is a major work of some 800 pages, uh, contains a lot of new material starting with the first chapter on the history of EPAs and LPAs, if I use those abbreviations, enduring and lasting, you'll know what I mean. Because, says um, uh, the author Lush, it, it considers not only the past but also contemplates what may be on the horizon. And on this note, the book examines the differences between LPAs and EPAs in some detail, which I think is very helpful. The practical guidance on executing and registering LPAs has been extended, and there is a new guidance on fees and costs, again of, of quite considerable importance. There's also a new precedence section and a new chapter on recognition and enforcement of foreign orders. This last in particular um, is of great importance, I think, for us as practitioners, dealing with the burgeoning number of cross-border cases we have, which inevitably will occur more frequently as globalisation continues apace. We're all moving around, we're all living older and longer, and we, we've got to start looking at it in a slightly different way. And I think that's, again, getting back to my point about IT in the courts, we've got to look at that very much in this decade for what we're going to have for the next 20 to 30 years a sort of judicature acts of the 19th century for the 21st century and that's really what we've got to be looking at I think to modernize procedures again it's reassuringly easy therefore to navigate this book with numbered paragraphs throughout which I've indicated it's distinguished in that it contains all the relevant material and information you need um, and will require as a practitioner there are seven appendices, including case reports, a commentary on re relevant uh, legislation, and all the necessary forms and much more. Forms, again, very important uh, as an area because, uh, if you're like me, it's nice to see the form and get a feel for what it is because you can look at it and think, oh, golly, what have I got to do with this one? And then when you look at it, it's a relatively straightforward. Um, as I've said, the seven appendices are therefore very helpful, and as you expect, there will there is in fact an extensive table of cases, statutes, SIs, and um, anything else that would be of direct relevance for your um, legal research. So let me conclude by saying, for practitioners having to deal with an often monumental complexity, which is in this particular area of law of L and EPAs. Um, it's particularly new, as it, welcome as a new addition, um, which I think you'll find actually indispensable. The law stated as at October 2013, we're now March 2014, you can see the sort of information in the book here, if I just show you some of the, the narrative inside. It's a lot of information, and I would think quite often a lot of the information you'd be looking for could be found in Cretney and Lush. And as I say, I'm very grateful to Jordans for producing this because I know how much work goes into these books. And we do rely on the books to go with the practice books that we use in court itself. But this sort of thing is very helpful because we are in a much more complex environment now than we ever were legally and this sort of stuff is extremely helpful to make our jobs as advisors perhaps just that bit easier. So thank you to all concerned for uh, an excellent new edition. Bye bye.